application for our existing Outlook users, yep. our existing Zombie for Outlook users. Uh, and then it was just really so we started off thinking, well, how about, you know, what if we're just transferring these contacts back and forth? Yep. Um, but when we got into that development, we suddenly realized that we had enough of the data on the BlackBerry and actually enough processing speed to do a lot of Zobni-like features in and of itself on the phone. Yep. You know, so uh, watching all of your emails, gathering uh, email addresses from two in the CC line, and building this rich address book, um, hitting all the social networks that we could. Uh, as we shipped, we're only hitting LinkedIn and Facebook, but we just kind of had to draw the line somewhere. Yeah. Um, but doing a lot of that sort of... Uh, that, that work on the device itself um, started to become a, a compelling experience and also opened up our market where we could use, you know, if you were a Gmail user, uh, it still became an interesting experience. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and this is a little bit of background into the, in the, to the development process, but we started thinking of, we sort of had two clients where we were like, well, we have this experience for the users that aren't on Zodney for Outlook, and what they're really looking for there is, all of their contacts, right? Like have these giant PST files where they have just, you know, years and years of email and thousands and thousands of contacts and they're like, I want those on my device. Yep. Um, so that sort of problem set was a little bit different in terms of how do we how do we manage and sync huge sets of data. Gigs of data, exactly. Yep. Yeah. And that and that really is where Zobni One sort of grew out from. Okay. Um and Zombie One is 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 our pretty much our cloud sync product, if you will. Uh, we try to refrain from using the word sync, though. Just a lot of uh, the uh, the architecture problems with sync. Yeah. You know, really like clobbering data and things like that. Like we we've totally avoided that, and we're just um, we try to keep all the data data weighted. Yeah. So. Like we might not delete the data, but we'll just shove it to the bottom of our search results and things like that. So, which we we actually think is the a better way to address it, um, and it sort of stems from something you said earlier, which kind of resonated with me, which was like I don't really want to have to folder my emails, right? I just want to search for stuff and have it all show up. Yeah. Um, so for me, th I had the same sort of realization when I started using Gmail. Oh, I don't know. What seven years ago? How long? Have you been? <laughs> um, was it? I, I just I just stopped putting my email in folders, and I just wanted search to work. Yeah. Right. And I and I stopped deleting email. I'm like, why? I, that just sounds like an extra task. Why should I have to do that? Yeah. That's exactly uh, we sort right. of have we have the same philosophy with contacts and email inside Zobni, where it's like, you know, why don't I just be intelligent, show you the right things at the right time, and you don't have to worry about all this management stuff. Well, yeah. Manage, management for me on an email client is uh, sure I can go to inbox zero, which I do because I just dump everything into an archive folder and then I can search with your tool, right? And and that's mm -hmm. the experience on on uh, you know on on the device as well. Um, it has to be that kind of it has to be synchronized that that I get the same results and the same experience on my desktop that I would be when I'm on the go carrying my BlackBerry. Uh, yeah. and that's I think is that what Zobni One is trying to to emulate. Yes, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Uh, so Zobni 1 really is like uh, making sure that your Zobni for Outlook and your Zobni for BlackBerry data sets are, are the same. Yeah. Um, that said, there are some caveats where it really does make sense to have a different experience on your phone than it does yeah. on your computer. Well, and, uh, that's with that, Michael, we've always thought that uh, you know, there's, there's certain things that you should not do on a device. Right, there's certain things that don't suit a BlackBerry or an iPhone, and that should be left to the desktop experience, right, or the laptop experience, or full GUI, full rich experience on a big screen. And maybe there's, uh, uh, you know, maybe there's 75 percent or 60 percent. I don't know what the percentage is of things that that do translate well onto a mobile device, and the other ones just shouldn't be attempted because the experience will take away from the product on the mobile device and and maybe anger or uh, you know um, alienate some of the customer base. So. You do what you should, and then mm -hmm. you leave the rest to be on the on, on something in a format that's much better uh, uh, or much more appropriate for for that feature, right? I yeah. Um, but when you talk about the BlackBerry client um, and um, and Zobni One, you you guys, um, you said that there was two customer base. There was the one that that already had Zobni for Outlook installed, and then there was the the other one which. Just are downloading Zobni for BlackBerry, right? Without the without the history. 
without the without the data? Is that the other side of it? Yeah. So the uh, the the other side of the the sort of BlackBerry client, which uh, actually adds a lot of benefit to to the Zombie for Outlook user too, and I'll, I'll get into some of the details. Um, but just for a normal BlackBerry user, it's still, and I mean, this is my opinion as the product manager of Zombie <laughs> Mobile, but uh, it's a much more compelling address. Yeah. It's one that I don't have to maintain. It's yeah. one that uh, is is constantly updated, uh, and is far more. You know, the data is far richer than a normal address book. Yeah. So, uh, the the drawback is the BlackBerry ship with the, the you know the default setting is thirty days worth of email. Yeah. Right. So that that sort of limits the the size of the email that we can really sort of scrub through and find all these contacts in. Uh, so on initial install, it's like, okay, well, the address of the book will be somewhat intelligent. Yeah. Um, but let's say you keep it on your phone for six months, and at this point, you know, six months of contacts and emails and everything have rolled on and off your device. Yep. We don't throw those contacts away, right? So you can imagine how intelligent your address book is now. Yeah. And so that investment, uh, we think, is, is, is interesting to everyone who uses a BlackBerry. Yep. And, and, and it's... Both. And it maintains that uh, the you know the uh, limited data use, the limited memory use requirements, the limited footprint that that is required. Uh, I mean, BlackBerry is known for that. Is is uh, they don't want to use too much data, they don't want to use too much battery power, they don't want to use all that. Yep. <clears throat> and this really plays into that. But you're accumulating all of that knowledge um, yep. and, and and storing that. That's that's yep. pretty amazing. That's an innovative yep. way to do it. We've uh, yeah we we spent a lot of time on on performance and uh, and. And really thinking about like all the edge cases and all of the you know nuances of people using their mobile phones and when to you know take up processor speed and when not to and when to know that the batteries plug you know that the phone's plugged in and to do your heavy lifting then and um, that's it's great. a lot of fun. <laughs> so I mean, not only and that's where I think that the the marriage of product management and and product design come in very very effectively is that. Uh, you know, you're not handing off the design to a to somebody who's going to go and, and manage the development of this without any without any background about the thinking behind the logic of, of the design of the product. So, right. uh, you know, I think that that's great. You become efficient at what you're doing. Um, yeah. And so now, so the the client la launched uh, last week. Now there is a cost, right? Yep. And I just got to put this in: is that I love that there's a cost for this, right? I I mean. Uh, run a number of software companies and and what's happened with kind of app store and app world is this uh, i've said it many times is the democratization of software where people think a dollar 99 is too expensive for a piece of software that takes a year and five million dollars worth of investment to get to the point where it's released so yeah. kudos to you guys for for putting a price tag and, and it's 10 bucks right. isn't it isn't that uh the price yeah of the, yeah, yeah. Um, unless you buy with zombie one and then 6.99 yeah and and uh, Zomni One is a uh, is a subscription service. Is that right? That's correct. Three ninety nine a month. Three dollars and ninety nine cents a month. It, yeah. Yep. I mean, it's yep. it's like microtransactions here. It's a latte a day or a latte a month that that you go towards. Uh, towards yeah. this. What what was the feedback? Uh, two things. What was the logic behind charging for it? 